Hey there, EV fans. Welcome to EVpedia, your ultimate source for all things electric vehicles. If you're as pumped about EVs as we are, make sure to hit that subscribe button and join our electrifying community. You'll get the latest EV news, reviews, and tips straight to your feed. And hey, don't forget to like this video if you enjoy it. It's like giving our batteries a boost. It's not just another fast electric SUV. The Ionic 5 in bridges past and future, it may also be the best performance bargain on sale. The Hyundai Ionic 5 in truly won me over when I made a mistake. Right after crossing the George Washington Bridge out of New York City, there's this wide arc of an exit ramp onto the Palisades Interstate Parkway that I always look forward to. If you hit it just right, like when there are a few other cars around or at night, you can drop your speed a bit and then power hard onto one of the state's most scenic roads, a sweet reward after all that Manhattan traffic. I was in second gear, with the engine roaring wide open throttle in my ear when flashing lights on the dashboard screen warned me that I was bouncing off my red line. Before I could exit the ramp, the Ionic 5N howled and hesitated as it reached its rev limiter, unable to speed up until I shifted into third and dropped the hammer again. Sure enough, I rocketed forward and passed an also-hustling BMW X5M without really trying, my own laughter drowning out the engine noises. I knew this car would be a riot to drive. I didn't expect a rev limiter to be part of the experience. I wrote much of the above in quotes because none of those things were actually happening. The electric Ionic 5N has no engine or dual-clutch transmission. It's been designed to replicate the experience of those things, sounds, feel, even vibrations, at a level you'd normally get from a gas-powered performance car, all with zero tailpipe emissions. Those sensations go with a thundering 641-horsepower SUV with better handling than something this heavy has any right to have. It launches from 0 to 60 in a little over 3 seconds, all for under $70,000. What a package. The Ionic 5N is more than just another fast electric SUV. It's the bridge between past and future, and it may be the best performance car bargain available right now, agnostic of what powers it. If this can't win over your diehard gas car gearhead friends, well, they must just hate fun. Full disclosure, Hyundai loaned me an Ionic 5N with a full battery for a few days. The car went back and forth between inside EVs and the staff of our sister site, Motor One. Lots of people wanted a turn. The 2024 Hyundai Ioniq 5N has a base and as tested price of $67,475, including the destination charge. It is equipped with an 84 kilowatt hours lithium ion battery, providing an EPA estimated range of 221 miles. The car's efficiency is 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour. This model features a one speed direct drive transmission with a simulated 8-speed dual-clutch transmission, DCT, for enhanced driving experience. The Ionic 5N delivers an output of 601 horsepower and 545 lb-ft of torque, which can increase to 641 horsepower and 568 lb-ft of torque with the Ingrin Boost Mode. Charging the battery from 10% to 80% takes approximately 18 minutes using DC fast charging at up to 250 kilowatts. For level 2 charging, it takes about 7 hours and 20 minutes. I have a lot to say, but let me start with this. The Ionic 5N is a professional ass kicker. It's here to kick some ass, find more ass when it's done, then kick that ass too. When you aren't driving it, you will think about driving it, while pondering all of the asses you're going to kick with its help. And since it's a Hyundai, most people will never see it coming. Name the challenger. Odds are, this electric Korean crossover does it better. It beats a Lamborghini Urus in a drag race makes the AMG Mercedes driver obnoxiously revving at a stoplight think twice about his next move and will send a Dodge Challenger fanboy to therapy. And if he was driving a Dodge Challenger, he probably should have been going anyway. The last performance car I drove that was this subversive was probably the Nissan GTR. And the Ionic 5N feels similar to the R35 GTR in character and mission, an evolution of the same philosophy. Had the engineers at Hyundai's N Performance Division wanted to make a standard go-fast edition of the terrific Ionic 5, you know, electric motor upgrades, track brakes, better suspension, the usual stuff, that would have been enough. But they went much further than that. It's almost an entirely different car. The entire structure has been stiffened and reinforced. It has 42 additional weld points, stiffening the body in white, motor mountings, battery mounts, and beyond. The brakes are track spec 15.75 inches, front rotors with four piston monoblock calipers, and 14.2 inches, rear rotors, and the regenerative braking system is unique to this model. The electric motors are also new here, 223 horsepower to the front and 378 at the rear for a combined sustained output of 601 horsepower. 
Using the Ingrin Boost setting, you can get 10 seconds of overboost, unlocking up to 641 horsepower. And Hyundai says that in track mode, the Ionic 5N uses the Regen system to load weight onto the front axle, giving you sharper turn and similar to trail braking in a standard performance car. The cooling system for the battery pack has been revised for the heavy cooling needs of on-track performance, and the airflow ducting to cool those brakes is specific to the N2. The software package has gimmicks a regular Ionic 5 lacks, including track apps and a dedicated drift mode. The seats, steering wheel, and other interior and exterior flourishes like the spoiler are also specific to the N. And much of the above has been derived from Hyundai's lessons competing in the World Rally Championship. This is all to say the Ionic 5N is an upgrade in countless ways that even the excellent Kia EV6 GT is not. The latter is a fast EV. This is a top-to-bottom performance product. It is the difference between taking some Brazilian jiu-jitsu classes in your neighborhood until you get decent at it and actually being Anderson Silva in his prime. Like the aforementioned GTR, the track is the only place you'll ever be able to access the Ionic 5N's full potential. And with so much power and grip, you better know what you're doing. I didn't get to do that for this test, but my colleagues at Motor One will later this summer. Instead, my goal was to find out how the Ionic 5N held up in normal driving and on good back roads, and what that IC simulating experience means every day. Specs that matter. Like the updated, regular 2025 Hyundai Ionic 5, the N gets a new 84 kilowatt hour battery and a host of other tweaks, including the long awaited rear windshield wiper. Of course, the N is the powerhouse of the family. Its output is 601 horsepower and 545 lbft of torque, significant upgrades over an AWD Ionic 5's 320 horsepower. Those numbers bump higher too when the Ingrin Boost feature is engaged. That extra power and cooling comes with trade offs, of course. At 4,861 pounds, it's heavier than all other Ionic 5 trim levels. And the 5N's range drops to just 221 EPA rated miles down from the 260 miles on an AWD Ionic 5 or 303 on the long-range RWD model. Interestingly, the N is not far off from the Southeast Standard Range Ionic 5, but I'm not sure how many people are actually buying that one. Overall efficiency is down as well, with the N making a combined 78 MPGU to the AWD Ionic 5's 99. I never saw numbers as high as 221. With a full charge on my Home Level 2 charge point unit, in moderate spring weather, I had 201 miles of range at most. The indicator usually hovered between 180 and 190 miles. I know some people will balk at those numbers, but energy has to come from somewhere. That Lamborghini Urus, which can't keep up with this thing, gets 16 combined MPG. Luckily, it's still an Ionic 5 deep down, so it's a charging champion. It keeps the 800 volt architecture with approximately 250 kilowatts max DC fast charging speeds. On a 350 kilowatts fast charger, it will go from a reported 10% to 80% in 18 minutes. A more detailed inside EV's range and fast charging test is coming soon. Pricing comes in at $67,475 including destination fees. There are no options to add besides a few accessories. You get all of that performance with the Ionic 5's usual practicality, including 59.3 cubic feet of cargo space with the rear seats down, plenty for a set of tires seating for 5 and up to 10.9 kilowatts of onboard power to run external devices. Let's talk about the fake IC stuff. When a friend stepped into my Soultronic Orange tester, she didn't even realize it was an EV. That's because the inactive sound plus feature makes the car rumble with a simulated engine sound that can be heard inside and out, pumped out of 10 interior speakers and two exterior ones. When engaged, they make the car feel like it's shaking at idle. It's quite convincing. So are the exhaust crackles and pops on top of it. Early reviews in Seoul last year dinged the end for sounding as fake as cars did in old Gran Turismo games, but they must have tweaked things since then. Videos and audio clips don't do it justice. It now sounds like the real thing. You get three sound profiles to choose from, including one modeled after the 2.0-liter turbo 4 used in Hyundai's gas N cars, one that sounds like a jet engine, and one that makes whoosh y futuristic noises. I didn't care for the latter two, and used the IC sound exclusively to head off any criticism from the EV crowd that doesn't miss engine sounds. Yes, you can turn all of this off, and you can adjust the exterior volume or turn that off as well. But you kind of need it to get the most out of this experience. It helps to give you the subconscious sensation of speed that's so often missing from EVs, making it easier to judge your speed without looking down at the gauge cluster. The real star was the fake transmission, dubbed NE Shift, which simulates an 8-speed dual-clutch gearbox. Press one of the end buttons on the steering wheel, whose functions can be customized, 
and the steering wheel paddles otherwise used to adjust regenerative braking become gear shifters. And they will do everything a gas car's DCT will do, including hitting redline or locking you out of too low gears at highway speeds. Try to leave a corner in too high of a gear and you'll feel the car bog, struggling for power like an ICE car outside of its power band. You can rev it while parked, too. The noise levels are even adjusted based on driving modes, speeds, and other factors. Downshifting results in a throttle blip and crack of the simulated exhaust. Upshifting brings a kind of jolt. There's a mechanical resistance, a vibration, that gives the different gears a unique feeling, just as a high-performance gas car would have. You can also hold the right paddle for a bit to go back to full auto mode, and still get the noise and feedback of the car clicking through its own gears. Seriously, I tried everything to fool this gearbox, to break it, to get it to do something it shouldn't. I never succeeded. It behaves like a true paddle shift transmission. Shifts between gears are lightning quick. And no, that is not a sentence I ever thought I'd write for this publication. You're actually just telling software to modulate the torque sent from the electric motors, which is silly and unnecessary. Electric vehicles have so much torque and use it so efficiently that they generally do not need multiple gears. All I can say is that it's supremely entertaining and under the right conditions, especially the right speed. You'll never think you aren't in a gas-powered performance car. Is it an anachronism, like getting your iPhone to act more like a flip phone? In many ways, sure. But I think it's more like firing up an emulator to play your favorite classic Super Nintendo game on your modern gaming console or smartphone. It may not be for everyone, but for some, it's revolutionary. When driven in anger, you can turn all of that stuff off, and the Ionic 5N is still warp speed fast. On one occasion, I moved left to pass a dump truck on a two-lane road, and I was utterly caught off guard by how much go this car delivers when you stand on it. When that rear motor unleashes its full force, the Ionic 5N doesn't accelerate, it teleports. The real fun happens when the road turns twisty, however. The Ionic 5N drives considerably smaller and lighter than it ostensibly is, whereas the normal Ionic 5 often feels the complete opposite. You can throw this thing into almost any corner, at almost any speed, and the primary limit will be your own courage. For the street, the best setting is sport mode with the right side in button, paddles on, ice sounds at full blast. That was enough for me. If it's not enough for you, the Ionic 5N affords an almost endless degree of customization and performance settings that are often only available on the track. Off a public road, or when you tell the car that you are, you can slide the torque settings to make it almost rear-wheel drive or front-wheel drive. You can see your lap times and lateral g-forces. You have two modes for racing, one for more intense sprints and one that preserves power for longevity. I didn't even get to use most of this stuff because it's meant for tracks only. Then again, due to the Ionic 5N's somewhat confounding array of performance settings, it's often hard to get it to do exactly what you want it to. I got a conditions not met error more than once when trying different features, locking me out when the right stability control, traction control, and safety settings weren't toggled right. Trial and error will be key here. But like the GTR, any owner would do well to track it. You won't get the most out of it otherwise. In normal driving, since life isn't a track day, switching all the performance settings and noises off basically gets you an Ionic 5 with less range and much rougher ride quality. You could do considerably worse for your daily driver. It's still a practical, roomy crossover with class-leading fast charging. That ride isn't horrible, think some of BMW's more intense M cars, but it is quite rough, as is the tire noise. It's never a terribly quiet environment no matter what settings you use. It's not even horribly inefficient. After 400 miles, including some very hard driving, I still average 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour. Besides the crazier settings, you also get normal mode, snow mode, and eco mode. Like many Hyundai EVs, the last one is almost comically slow. The Ionic 5 in somehow ranges from can take down a McLaren to needs positive encouragement to drive up a hill, but that's all part of its charm. I never saw some great range boost out of eco mode, either. Hyundai's racing bucket seats were more comfortable than a lot of similar options for everyday use, but they are unfortunately manually operated, par for the course in the performance world, but still a bummer at this price. At least Hyundai uses a good amount of physical buttons for key controls in addition to its large touchscreen, but I have far less love for the touch panel that operates the climate controls. I could seldom tell, or even see, whether it was doing what I asked or not. Beyond that, the Ionic 5N boasts the same excellent voice controls, navigation, charger finding, route planning, and adjustable regenerative braking you get from any Hyundai Motor Group EV. Which is to say, it's world class. But it's tough to say if just around 200 miles of electric range is enough to be someone's solo daily driver. This may make more sense as a second car, or a toy, 
unless your driving distances are relatively short. Verdict. To understand why I find the Ionic 5 in so special, it helps to go back to why the electric car transition, slow and uneven as it may be, is even happening. As someone who started in the gas car enthusiast world, but has long since accepted the ugly truth of our climate emergency, I had become okay with giving up some things for a hopefully cleaner and better future. Engine sounds. The thrill of shifting gears. Unfortunate sacrifices, but necessary ones to move off the country's largest single source of carbon emissions. The Ionic 5N is proof that I don't necessarily have to give those things up. I won't lie and say it's some magic bullet for climate change. It's good, but not that good. But it does prove that I can still have all of those internal combustion sensations in a package that can be charged in my garage. And as an added bonus, it'll outhandle, outrun, and just outgun the vast majority of cars that run on gasoline. If you're into EVs already, you may not miss transmissions and engine sounds. I get that, and I also love the silence I get with most electric cars. If you're a gas car purist, you'd rather go that route than simulate anything. I understand that argument too. Ego. But with the Hyundai Ionic 5, I can have my cake and kick some ass with it too. Thanks for tuning in to EVpedia. If you had as much fun as we did, leave us a comment below and tell us your favorite electric vehicle moment. And remember, hitting that subscribe button is the best way to keep the EV vibes flowing. Until next time, stay charged and keep those wheels spinning.